Welcome to the Old Time Radio Superman Show. This is your host, Adam Graham, coming to you from Boise, Idaho. Last time we left, Professor Thorpe and the captain were about to step into a fight with Pete Escobar. Um, Escobar having come on board to steal the treasure after Superman's rescue of the bathosphere. Um, and now we, we get into... Uh, and now we're, we're going to get into part eight. Before we get started, I want to, as always, encourage you to please check out Laser and Sword magazine, lasersword.adamsweb.us. I encourage everybody, go and check it out. Um, we've got some, uh, we, we're going to have some, a great, great issue four coming out, and I encourage everybody to just go to lasersword.adamsweb.us um, for short serial fiction. Uh, for today's reader. But without any further ado, let's get into uh, the Professor Thorpe's Bathosphere, Part 8. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman! Look at the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Now Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who has come to Earth, resolved to lend his amazing physical powers to the fight for truth and justice. Superman, who can bend steel in his bare hands, leap tall buildings at a single bound, and who mingles with ordinary men disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for the Daily Planet newspaper. When Kent accompanied Professor A.B. Thorpe, middle-aged inventor of a new deep-sea diving bell, to the Caribbean Sea in search of a sunken Spanish gold treasure... He never anticipated running into so much varied adventure. But finally, the $2 million gold hoard was brought up from the bottom of the sea and placed on board Professor Thorpe's ship, the Juanita. As our story continues today, it is after midnight, and the Juanita is riding at anchor under a moonless sky. Two men have rowed out from the rocky shore and at this very moment are crouched on deck with sharp steel-bladed knives clutched in their hands. One of them is Pete Escobar, a half who has known about the Spanish gold for a long time and has come to steal it. The other is his henchman, Carlos, a thin-lipped, sallow-cheeked desperado. As they wait, hiding behind the huge steel diving bell in which the gold is stored, Professor Thorpe, unable to sleep due to excitement, approaches, accompanied by Captain Maddox, skipper of the Juanita. Listen. I've forgotten completely that you hadn't seen the gold we brought from that sunken Spanish ship, Captain Maddox. The excitement just slipped my mind. Well, that didn't bother me, Professor. All I was interested in was getting you and the diving bell up from the bottom after that hurricane hit us. Well, you'll see the gold now. Two million dollars worth of Spanish doubloons. A king's ransom, Maddox. Enough to make my dream of building a scientific institute dedicated to the betterment of mankind become a reality. Well, we've certainly gone through enough to get it, sir. And the sooner we carry it back to America, the better I'll like it. I've had the feeling all along that we haven't heard the last of that half-breed Escobar. Pete Escobar? Yes. Oh, oh, he won't bother us again. Remember, we left him floundering around in the harbor back at Manau. Yes, I remember, but... Wait a minute. you hear that peculiar noise? No. No, I don't hear a thing. Except the creaking of the boat. Like something banging up against the ship's port side? Here? No. Listen, uh... It sounds like a rowboat moored to our boarding ladder. Now, take a look. Oh, don't bother with that now, Maddox. I want to show you the gold. Yes, but if it's either of our small boats, Professor, it shouldn't be there. Well, if it isn't one of ours... Well, then... you can investigate later, Maddox. Let me show you the treasure, and then I'll go below again and try to get some sleep. All right. Have your flashlight? Yes, yeah, right here. All right, snap it on. Now, Carlos. Now, Carlos. Now, Carlos. Good work, Carlos. Now, quickly, the gold in the bathosphere into the sack. Someone else may come. Yes, Carlos. Uh, these boxes have much coal in them, eh? Five, six, seven, eight, only two more. Here they are. Now, you take one sack and I take the other. Quickly. Get down into the rowboat, Carlos. I will owe the sacks to you. Hey, hey. I am ready, Escobar. Uh, Diablo. There, here we are. Uh, you have that one? Uh, here is the other. Now, hold the rowboat steady while I come down. Take the oars, Carlos. Row as you have never rowed before. Hey, Carlos. Two million dollars worth of it. Two million. It's just a shoulder wound and not very serious, Professor Thorpe. I'll wash it out and bandage it up. Uh, let me have that warm water, Sarah. 
Pollard Maddox came. Was he hurt badly? Yes, I'm afraid so. He's still unconscious. I took the liberty of ordering the Juanita to sail from Manao Harbor at once. Captain Maddox needs medical attention. You did the right thing, Kent. There we are. Oh. Now, the wound is washed out. Now I'll bandage it up for you. Kent, is all the gold gone? All of it, Professor. I still don't understand why you didn't shout for help. I was only dozing in my cabin. There wasn't time. Just as Maddox flashed his light, Escobar leaped up from behind the diving bell, followed by another man, and they both had knives. You're sure it was Escobar? Positive. I saw his face clearly, just before he stabbed me. But how did they get on board? Probably in the rowboat Maddox had banging against the ship's side. He wanted to investigate, but I restrained him. If he had found the rowboat, it never would have happened. I have only myself to blame. Oh, come now, Professor. That's no way to look no, at it. True, Ken. Not only have I lost the gold, but you say Maddox is seriously injured. He may die. If he does, his blood will be on my hands. Tell the first mate to pile the steam on. To push the one eat as fast as she'll go. Okay, Professor. We've got to get Maddox to a doctor before it's too late. Before it's too late. <laughs> With the captain's life hanging by a thread, the staunch little ship plows across the vastness of the Caribbean Sea, heading for the nearest port, Manao Harbor. In the meantime, back in the offices of the Daily Planet, editor Perry White, worried at not having heard from Kent and unable to reach the Juanita by radio, has assigned another reporter, Bill Wentworth, to locate the missing boat. Overhearing editor White's instructions to Wentworth, Jimmy Olsen, young Daily Planet copy boy and staunch admirer of Clark Kent, stows away aboard the plane Bill Wentworth charters for the trip. You find them now in the room of a small hotel in Manao Harbor. Operator. Operator, have you put through my call to Mr. Perry White at the Daily Planet? Please, Mr. Wentworth, don't tell Mr. White. I didn't mean anything by uh, it. Not much you didn't. Sneaking on board the plane and not showing yourself until we landed in Manao Harbor. A very pretty trick. Uh, all right, maybe it was a trick, but I had to do what I had to, Mr. Wentworth. When I heard Mr. White tell you Clark Kent was missing, I couldn't stay behind. Clark's a friend of mine, and I give up my life for him. All right. <laughs> Operator. Operator. Cancel that call. Now stop bawling like a baby, White. Jimmy. I won't call Mr. White. Gee, Mr. Wentworth, you're swell. No, I'm just a soft-hearted fool. If I wasn't, I'd ship you back home on the first boat. However, I'm going to let you stay until we locate Kent and Professor Thorpe. On one condition. I'll do anything, anything you say. All right. Now, this is the condition. You are never to leave my sight no matter what happens. Is that clear? Absolutely, Mr. Wentworth. And don't call me Mr. Wentworth. My name is Bill. Okay, Bill. What do we do first? Well, I got some information from the chief of the harbor police. The Juanita left here for an undisclosed destination three days ago and hasn't been heard from since. Well, three days isn't such a long time, well, is it? not ordinarily. There was a hurricane out at sea yesterday. Oh. The one leader is only a small boat, you know. Well, I think the best thing we can do is charter another boat and go out looking for her. Yeah. Well, finding her is a hundred to one chance, but it's worth a try. Uh, Mr. Wentworth. Huh? I mean, Bill, there's something I don't quite understand. Why did Clark Kent go on this trip with that professor? Well, according to the story in the papers, Thorpe planned to study deep-sea forms of marine life in his new bathosphere, a uh, diving bell. Well, that's what I thought, but isn't it true? No, it isn't. Thorpe was searching for a treasure in Spanish gold. A $2 million treasure at the bottom of the sea. No wonder it was such a secret. Well, that's what worried Perry White, Jimmy. He had an idea someone else was in on the secret. Well, let's not waste any time. The quicker we get a boat, the quicker we can get on the way. Come on. Well, this looks like the place, Bill. Didn't that man say the Paradise Cafe? Yes. And he said we could hire a boat from a man named Pete Escobar. Now, uh, maybe you'd better wait outside, Jimmy. This joint looks tough. But you made me promise never to be out of your sight. Okay, kid, you win. Come on. We'll ask the bartender. Okay. Can you tell me where I can find uh, Pete Escobar? Como? I I'm looking for Pete Escobar. I, I want to hire a boat, and I understand he owns one. In the back room, you find Escobar. Well, thanks. Follow me, Jimmy. Right behind you, Bill. I can't say I like the looks of the cutthroats hanging around this dive. You stick close to me. I will. Here's the door. Uh, Mr. Escobar? 
Who told you to come in here? Oh, the bartender. I, I want to hire a boat. The man down at the dock said you had one for hire. Who are you? Well, my name is Wentworth, and this is my friend Jimmy Olson. Oh. Now, come on in, Jimmy. Okay. Close the door. I don't tire of my boat anymore. What you want it for? Fishing? No, uh, but we just thought we'd take a little cruise for a few days. We're going to look for a ship called the Juanita. A friend of ours is on it. Jimmy. Wanna... Oh. So you're looking for the Juanita, huh? You uh, have a friend on the Juanita. Oh, boy, just fooling it. We don't care about the Juanita. We, we just want to take a cruise. I see. You just want to take a cruise. It's uh, too bad my boat is not for hire. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, we're sorry. Well, thanks just the same. Come on, Jimmy. Oh, well, wait. I'm tying my shoe. Mary, it's tight. Come on. Okay. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Escobar. Adios. Hurry. Hurry, Jimmy. The quicker we get out of here, the better. You bet. Follow me to the street. Okay. Walk past, Jimmy. Right back to the hotel. I've got something to tell you. It's important. And I've got plenty to tell you, young man. You never should have mentioned the Juanita. Suppose Professor Thorpe has already found the gold and is headed back here. We don't want any of these natives hanging around the ship. If Professor Thorpe did find the gold, then he hasn't got it now. What do you mean, Jimmy? Here, stop under the streetlight. Remember when I said I was tying my shoe? Yes. Well, I wasn't at all. I was picking something up from under the table Escobar was sitting at. What was it? I got it right here in my hand. Look. Good heavens. It's a gold doubloon. Dated 1784. That's right. An old Spanish gold piece. Jimmy. I think you've stumbled onto something. Yes, sir. Escobar must have the treasure Professor Thorpe was after. No wonder he looked so funny at us when you mentioned the one either. You think he's trying to make trouble for us, Bill? Uh, Jimmy, it's hard to... Wait. Look. Those two men who just came out of the cafe. Yes, sir. They act like they're looking for somebody. Jimmy. They're looking for us. Oh, they see us, Bill. They're coming after us. You're right, Jimmy. Come on. Run. Right. Run. What good will the old Spanish doubloon do, even as a clue to the disappearance of the Juanita, now that Pete Escobar, because of Jimmy's slip, knows the two Americans are Clark Kent's friends? How can they escape Escobar's killers? And in the meantime, what of the Juanita nearing Manao Harbor? Don't forget to tune in next time and follow the thrilling story of sunken Spanish gold with Superman. And remember, tune in the next thrilling installment of the transcription feature... Superman! Up in the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics Magazine. Welcome back. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm going to break some news to you that this is actually a show that is uh, what you would call a product of its time. Uh, you notice the phrase for Pete Escobar, uh, half-breed, would not be something we would use today. So um, I, I note that uh, that's the show. We don't rewrite it. Um, the reintroduction, this this was kind of sudden. Uh, we get... Uh, we get a complication in the plot with the introduction of Bill as, is he a secondary character or a, or a third level character, um, to get to the other side, to get the other side along with, uh, the, the reappearance of Jimmy Olsen. Um, and it's, uh, it, it's in it's in many ways, uh, you know. I, I I'm amazed Escobar. Oh sure, let me leave these Spanish doubloons out where anybody in this in this bar throw full of cutthroats can steal it. That makes a lot of sense. Um, but uh, there there's always, of course, when Superman's not around, and a lot of this is uh, setting things up for Superman to come to the rescue. It's it's kind of like you know on TV where the where you set up the magician's act and they say okay we're gonna t I'm I'm gonna tie my hands behind this chair uh, we're gonna tie it with some thick chains and we're gonna double lock these chains and and now we're gonna throw me into the tank this is a lot of it it's, it's setting it up for Superman to come to the rescue in, in the nick of time which I'm hoping will happen sometime before the end of part twelve. But uh, this has been a, a fairly uh, deep and detailed story. 
um, compared particularly to the six-parters. So I'm looking forward to seeing what happens in Part 9. So I will see you on Wednesday. For now, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.